Hey guys, I'm standing here in an amazing hangar next to this Arcus jet, which I already flew a few days ago. On the other side, we have this hybrid electric stall plane, which is also very efficient. Let's talk to JP Stewart, Vice President of Electra, how this all works and what it is about. Hi Stefan, thanks for coming. So what's Electra? Electra is about air transportation without the airports. So we're really trying to get closer to home, work and play in a way that's clean, quiet, and at the end of the day, saves you time. Well, okay, so it is not a tow plane, I think? I wish, I wish, <laughs> but the Jet Arcus does pretty good for self-launching. <laughs> okay, and um, you want to transport people with this, so it's not for private pilots to fly on their own? Exactly, they could certainly, but for the most part, it's really about commercial and regional air mobility. So you have, you know, nine passenger class aircraft, sometimes flying cargo, sometimes flying people, but really accessing these small places, less than 300 feet or about 100 meters. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> How awesome. does it work? Yeah, let's take a look at the airplane. So this is our two seat technology demonstrator. It's got eight electric motors along the wing that blow the wing and allow the airplane to fly very slowly under control. Think about 30 knots or 15 meters per second during takeoff and landing. And that's really what allows it to take off and land in very short distances at car-like accelerations and speeds. But the real trick is once you get higher, once you put the flaps up and accelerate into cruise, it's a fast airplane, 175 knots. So this technology demonstrator incorporates three core technologies. The blown lift aerodynamics that lets you take off and land at low speed or in short distances. The distributed electric propulsion powered by the hybrid powertrain where we have the small gas turbine in the nose and the batteries in the belly and the fly-by-wire flight controls that allow the motors and the other control surfaces to make an airplane that's much simpler and easy to fly at low speeds. This sounds really amazing so far. For me, what really stands out are here these propellers. Here at the outside, we have these different ones than here in the middle. What is the difference and why did you choose here different motors or different propellers? Yeah, so this was a, an old design of our, of our propellers, but one of the real interesting potential advantages of the electric aircraft is just how much quieter they are. At 500 feet, it's quieter than a conversation. You can hear leaves rustling, and it's just really incredible for an aircraft like this to, to be that quiet. But this was our old design prop. They're still pretty quiet, but we thought we could do better, and that's really what led to this new design. These are substantially quieter propellers that also make more thrust, and so that's how you really can tell that they're a lot more efficient. The blown lift is really an, an aerodynamic design that allows the prop wash from the propellers to blow the high lift devices, the flaps. So in this case, we have a really special double slotted Fowler flap. This is just a partial extension, but it goes all the way to 70 degrees down that allow that flow to turn and make this lift a lot more effective. Basically, it's three times the lift of a similar sized wing. What's really interesting to see here is the all flying tail. Why do you need it at this stall plane? That allows you to have good pitch control at low speeds. And it's a really interesting trade in the design. On one hand, you could blow the tail too, but that adds a lot of complexity. And so we chose to make a much simpler tail that's just a mechanical all-flying tail. So it looks like it is really, really big. It's uh, compared to the wings, I would say, nearly the half wingspan. Um, but you need it so that you can fly with this low speed. Yeah, and for a tech demonstrator, we were a little conservative on how big the tail should be. That's part of the decision when you're really trying to figure out what technologies you're proving. There are places where it makes sense to take some of that design risk and place where, places where it doesn't. And so for us, making the tail a little bit bigger reduced some of the risk that during flight tests we would have to stop, redesign, rebuild the tail. On the next airplanes, we're able to make it smaller than it currently is. Perhaps we can attach here a tow rope, but I think that's not the use case of this component here. <laughs> no, it's a tail skid, but I'll get the rope if you want to try it out again. So you can grab <laughs> it through the window like you did before. I think the problem is you can fly so slow here with this uh, stall plane <laughs> that my glider won't fly. <laughs> yeah, we can go fast too. But this here really looks like a fly test with all these threads here. These are no yaw strings. What are you doing here? 
Yeah, they're no yaw strings, but they, they serve the same function. They're there to tell you what the direction of the air is. And so we use them in flight tests to see where there's separation, where there's cross flow going along the wing. And it's really been a good tool for us when combined with a tail camera to see what's going on on the wing. So far in the flight test, we've flown down as slow as 24 knots, about 12 meters per second, and still haven't found the stall speed yet. Wow, that's amazing. Let's have a look inside the cockpit. What is here different from other planes? Yeah, well, you'll find that it's actually a lot closer to other planes than you expect. You fly with a single power lever, so all of the motors then manage themselves, and you just set how much power you want. And then the hybrid system is actually really neat. It's pretty simple to manage. You turn on the high voltage, then you turn on the turbo generator, and it really takes care of itself after that and tracks how much power it makes sure to take care of the battery charge throughout the flight. And so the pilot really doesn't have to think that much about it. How much redundancy do you have with all these motors here? Yeah, the eight electric motors and in the product, five different energy sources, four batteries plus the turbo generator, really improve the safety and reliability of the whole system. Even in flight test on the two seat demonstrator, we've turned off motors in flight and shown that the airplane was controllable even then. It's my first time sitting in a stall plane and even here in an electric stall plane. Did you already make a flight here on your own? We just put the second seat in, so I'm going to go soon. But next time you're back, we'll sign you up to go fly too. Wow, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, great. You know, one of the neat things from a passenger perspective is it really isn't that different from a normal airplane. Though you're flying slowly and taking off in a short distance, the actual angle of the airplane or the cabin that the passengers are sitting in is very conventional on the order of about 10 degrees. Well, what can we see here on top uh, on the ceiling here? Well, this is a real technology demonstrator, so it's more like a Formula One sports car than a, than a full product. But it's great to be able to see everything for maintenance and, and inspections in the tech demonstrator. Okay, and then you also have here a GoPro and all the other wiring and stuff back here. Oh, yeah, there's a lot to see in here. Yeah, we're not live streaming the flights yet, but we do record uh, the, the equipment and the, the pilot so that we have the ability to go back and, and look at that in flight test. We've seen the inside. Why don't we go outside and talk a little bit more about the next steps? What's the airplane made of? We saw on the inside the fuselage is carbon fiber. And the wings are actually metal. It started as a Cessna 172. There's not a whole lot of 172 left now after we've replaced so many of part, the parts and added new components to it, but it still carries that spirit. This is a great two-person airplane. Will you manufacture and sell it like this? Not the two-seater, but the next step is really focused on the nine passenger aircraft that we're working on now. And we've got 50 different commercial customers, which have a demand for over 2,000 aircraft already under pre-order. So we're working with them to get that airplane into service. JP, thank you so much. It is such an interesting project. Really looking forward to hear from you some updates later on as well. But um, it's getting dark outside. I Which think we should go fly gliders. Is that, that's what you do at night, right? Wow, well, that is something we definitely should do because you are allowed to fly at night with the Arcus jet and I have never done it before. Let's go flying. <laughs>